First of all, just help us understand the overall focus and objectives of this year's annual meeting and where the capital is likely to flow as a result. So this is our first annual meeting in Central Asia, and Central Asia is a critical region uh, in, in Asia for cross-border connectivity, for climate challenges, uh, building resilient infrastructure for all is the theme of the meeting. And we see uh, this opportunity to gather with our 109 members from around the world as a, as a, as a great opportunity to build our uh, relationships, build our programs, uh, sign agreements and, and, and understandings. Um, and, you know, AIB is channeling its resources towards climate finance, towards cross-border connectivity and towards mo mobilising the private sector towards those, those goals. And I believe this meeting will help us to achieve that objective. We have a wonderful client here in Uzbekistan. The government here ha has worked with us to develop an, an ambitious programme to do with both transport and, and uh, climate-related infrastructure. And we look forward to much more of that to come. So just to pick up on something you mentioned there, how does uh, AIIB specifically enhance infrastructure connectivity between Asia and Europe through these projects in Central Asia? And why is this region such an important focus right now? So connectivity investment takes many forms. Um, it involves uh, transport, such as roads, railways, um, you know, this, uh, but also digital connectivity. We see increasingly also the importance of cross-border connectivity in uh, electricity power generation, especially for the renewables re uh, revolution. Uh, enabling cross-border grids is a critical uh, role, for, for example. And Central Asia is in a, is in a pivotal position globally between, between Europe and, 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 and China and Southeast Asia. Um, with close links also to the, to, the, to the Middle East and South Asia. And so strengthening the infrastructure here is not only extremely important for the development of, the, of, of Central Asia itself, but also to bringing these different regions closer together. And of course, in uh, my own experience, I know that this is a region that is also particularly vulnerable to the fast moving impact of climate change. And that's why we've seen quite a significant shift, Danny, in where the capital is being deployed in order to address some of these global challenges that impact this region. And we flagged this earlier, but multilateral development banks put $125 billion towards climate action last year. What is AIIB's role in pushing forward some of that capital and where does the money need to move most? What's the most urgent priority when it comes to financing that challenge? Well, green infrastructure and especially climate finance is the number one priority for uh, AIB. We last year committed 60% of our financing towards, uh, towards climate projects and that basically in two categories. Uh, mitigation, which means uh, renewable energy measures to reduce uh, carbon emissions and tackle the causes of climate change. But also very important, especially in this region, is climate change adaptation, helping to protect people from the ravages of climate change. You know, we're seeing droughts, floods, uh, many other natural disasters coming from climate change all over the world. As you said, this region is particularly uh, vulnerable. So strengthening water systems, ensuring every kind of infrastructure is protected from what climate change may throw at it over the coming decades. I think that's a key priority. And we do see investment in uh, adaptation and resilience lagging behind uh, the important investment in, in mitigation and reducing carbon emissions. So I think a key focus of this meeting is about resilient infrastructure. It's both about building resilience into every infrastructure project, which is uh, something that AIB does routinely, but also about developing those projects, including nature-based solutions, for example, which help to strengthen humanity's ability to deal with the catastrophic consequences that we're already seeing from the changes in our climate that have already taken place. And sadly, those are going to get worse in the years to come.